You know, I think compared to Russia, Buddhism in Russia and Buddhism in Mongolia, I think there, there's a huge difference. And I, and, I, and I say this because in Mongolia, Buddhism was not completely destroyed. Not all the monasteries were completely destroyed. Of course, majority of them were destroyed. And uh, majority of the monastic uh, you know, communities uh, were destroyed. But to a certain extent, there was Buddhism preserved to, uh, to, a, certain, uh, to a certain extent. And, uh, and, I, and I think the vice president of the United States in the 40s, uh, who was able to make a diplomatic uh, visit to Mongolia, and Mongolia's government, their intention was to prove to the outside world that religious freedom existed, Buddhism existed as part of the Mongolian life. And therefore, they were uh, under very strict control. Uh, there was a few monasteries that were allowed to function and to remain open uh, to the public. Uh, first, it was uh, designed as a sign to show it to the American vice president. But after he left, they decided to keep it that way. So, so uh, you know, Mongolia, you know, was able to preserve a lot more than Russia. And in terms of in Russia, for example, in Kalmykia, as well as in Tuva, all the temples and monasteries were completely destroyed. And also majority of the Buddhist monasteries in Buryatia as well were destroyed. But there was a very few number of monasteries that were uh, able to function under tight uh, uh, control and observation by the communist government. I would say the most challenging uh, of reviving Buddhism in Russia and Mongolia is on the mental level. Uh, because you are challenging a to totalitarian system mentality, a communist mentality, where the people who grew up as atheists, as a non-believer, and to prove to, that, uh, to those type of people or mindset that religion is important. Religion is not simply a faith, but also it is a science. Uh, it's a philosophy. It's a way of life. So I think that, that would probably be the most biggest challenging, is challenging the mindset of the communist people. Of course, it takes time. You know, the uh, conversion or change of attitude does not happen overnight. It's a very slow process. And I think we were able to achieve that uh, in the last 20 plus years. So it's a slow process, and I think over time, you know, in, in terms of Buddhism, uh, it's a very realistic approach to life and to situation in general. So through logic and reasoning and through the realistic approach, I think people were able to f slowly understand and realize how pragmatic Buddhism is and how it can be applied to their life, to their daily lives, not necessarily as a religion, but simply as a philosophy and simply as a science as well.